Hello, and welcome to A Creative Mind of Fiction podcast. I'm Alice Nelson, your host for this week's excursion. Each week, the extremely talented Carrie Zilk and myself write, produce, and narrate our original stories for your listening pleasure. If you love a good story, and really, who doesn't, this is definitely the podcast for you. And please, tell all your friends. And if you are an ACM virgin, don't worry, I'll be gentle. You can find past episodes at acreativemindfiction.com. Today is Tiny Fiction Day! Yay! And what does that mean, you ask? Well, that means I was cleaning up some of my stories on the old laptop, and I found a couple of my older stories from a few years back. And instead of my usual thousand words or more, because I can get pretty wordy up in here, these stories are 700 words or less. And that's because at the time, the writing group that I now moderate We were limited to 700 words or less. That was just based on the platform we were using. The current group now is called A Place for Fiction Writers, and I co-moderate it with the lovely Carrie Zilka. And if you'd like to join a great critique group, please press the link on the ACM homepage. Any hoot, I found one of these older stories that I really liked and I have never done for you here on the podcast. I'm like, what? So I'd like to share it with you, my beloved ACM listeners. And the prompt for this particular week was web, W-E-B as in boy. And it could be any kind of web, a physical web, a metaphorical web, the World Wide web, a web of lies, even webbed feet. There just had to be some type of web that figured into the theme somehow. So I chose the ultimate web. You guessed it. That of Jack Webb, the actor who played Detective Joe Friday in that old TV show called Dragnet. So sit back and I do hope you enjoy this edition of Tiny Fiction with the story titled Jack's Web. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. He laughed. (laughs) God, I love that guy. Charlie Halstrom would tell anyone who was willing to listen and there weren't many who wanted to, that he loved Jack Webb. Yes, that Jack Webb. None other than Mr. Joe Friday from the TV show Dragnet. Charlie's brother Steve brought him the DVDs after an accident left Charlie bedridden, and he watched them religiously, memorizing each and every episode. For 35-year-old Charles Edward Halstrom, being cooped up for months with two busted legs made him want to crawl out of his skin. His only saving grace was the tough, no-nonsense, fast-talking Joe Friday. The character resonated with Charlie, who was also the no-nonsense type. But he was becoming obsessed, and Trudy was growing tired of listening to Charlie go on and on about Dragnet. And with every telling, Trudy wanted to crawl out of her skin. Charlie was staying with his brother, Steve, and sister-in-law Trudy until he got back on his feet, and that day could not come soon enough for Trudy. Each day when she got home from work, she'd hear the rapid-fire dialogue from the show and wished Charlie would just go away. But they were the only family he had. There was nowhere else he could go. Now she watched as he quietly mumbled, Just the facts, ma'am. At that moment, Trudy resented everything about her brother-in-law. All she wanted to do was make Charlie feel as miserable as she did. Did you know he never said, Just the facts, ma'am? She blurted out. There was obvious contempt in her voice. Charlie looked away from the TV. His face was unreadable. Trudy went on. He actually said, all we want are the facts, ma'am. Quietly, Charlie said, I know, Trudy, and went back to watching episode four from season three for the umpteenth time. Trudy turned to leave, and standing behind her was Steve. The look on her husband's face made her feel terrible. Steve, she said, but he just walked away disgusted by her behavior. Trudy caught up with them, and Steve said, How can you be so mean to him, Trudy? I just want our house back, she said. 
our lives back. All he does is watch that show. He isn't even going to physical therapy anymore. That accident nearly killed him, Trudy. If it takes longer than you want for him to recover, that's just too bad. Trudy knew Steve was right, but she couldn't shake the bitterness she felt toward Charlie. That night at dinner, Charlie had one of his brilliant ideas. Hey, you guys, let's do a dragnet marathon tonight. Popcorn pizza the works. He was genuinely excited. Trudy, not so much. Sure, Steve said before she could answer. Trudy glared at him, but Steve ignored her. Sounds like a fine boy's night, Trudy responded, trying to sound lighthearted. I think I'll turn in early. You two have fun. Inside, though, she was seething. It was 3 a.m. when Trudy woke up suddenly. Steve wasn't in bed, and her anger at Charlie welled up all over again. As Trudy made her way downstairs, she could hear Joe Friday's distinctive voice even before she reached the bottom step. But what she saw made no sense. Lying on the floor in the TV room were the dead and bloodied bodies of both Steve and Charlie. Police were milling about, and to her amazement, Jack Webb was the detective in charge. When he saw Trudy, Joe Friday said, Have you been here all night, Mrs. Halstrom? But Trudy couldn't speak. She just looked up at the face of a fictional character from a television series that had been off the air for more than 40 years. He was real, though, and his expression demanded she answer. This can't be, she muttered. This just can't be. Mrs. Halstrom, your husband and brother are dead, and you are the only witness, Detective Friday said in that rapid way he always spoke. There's no time to waste. All we need are the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. And Trudy screamed. And those are the facts of my story. I do hope you enjoyed it. Some of you out there may not even know about the show Dragnet. Although it was well before my time, I remember seeing it in syndication when I was a kid, and I even used to watch it with my very own Spawn. If you do get a chance to check it out, I would highly recommend it. They touched on some heavy subjects for the time when television wouldn't even let a married couple sleep in the same bed together. Well, that's all I got for you this week, and thanks again for checking in. I truly appreciate it. And come back next week for another exciting new story. Also, I want to implore you to check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash acreativemindfiction, all one word. Or you can go to acreativemindfiction.com and click on the link on the right-hand side. It does take money to produce and write and do all these stories, and we love doing them for you. And if you'd like to be a patron of the show, you can for as little as $1 a month. And for $4 a month or more, you will get stories not available on the regular free website. They will be available only to our Patreon supporters. And if you want a hint of what you could get for your four bucks, check out the first episode of a new ACM series called Small Town Stories. The first episode is on the ACM page. The next episode will be available in September only for our patrons. We would greatly appreciate anything you can spare. Also, please take time to rate us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podkicker, or wherever you listen. This way we can move up the old podcast hierarchy and more people will know about our show and be able to listen. You can contact us on Twitter at Fiction Podcasts, or me personally at AliceRNelson at gmail.com, or find me on Twitter where my handle is at TheAliceNelson. You can simply drop me a line in the comment section below this story at acreativemindfiction.com. Well, that's it for me, ladies and gents, and I will see you again in two weeks. Bye-bye.